Hi, I'm Mike. It's a rough day on the ranch as we continue our 30 in 30, 30 vlogs in 30 days. And you get a chance to look behind the scenes at an event that never would have made it to the channel if it wasn't for this vlog. It's coming up. Good morning, gang. We're back at it once again as uh, we continue our 30 and 30, 30 vlogs in 30 days. And uh, right now we are smack dab in the, well, I won't say we're in the middle. We're actually still in the beginning parts of calving. We have, uh, let me see, 12 calves on the ground last at last count anyway. Uh, Last night, um, we had one of Lincoln's cows actually had a calf last night, and we tagged that one with number 13, lucky number 13. Last year, I actually talked about um, retiring number 13 and not using it ever again, um, but I kind of decided to go ahead and tag the calf with number 13. Uh, just because I didn't feel like being pushed down by superstition, even though I can be a superstitious person. But I decided to laugh in the face of superstition this year, this year and get that done. So um, we are up to 13, actually 12, because we lost number six. And speaking of that, uh, we are expecting a phone call from the vet either today or tomorrow where we will find out exactly, well, hopefully we'll find out um, a reason or a, a, you know a reason for death or hopefully something to shed some light on that situation so um, right now we are heading out uh, to check calves here first thing this morning uh, temperatures in the 20s uh, we're expecting um, I think something right you're in the mid 30s for a, for temperature today uh, but we do have some snow on the way as well so that could come later on this evening uh, but we will definitely have to uh, prepare for that with any new calves that we are having. So we're heading out. Cows are pretty spread out this morning. And we roll out here and the very first thing we start looking for is any cows that look like they might be in the process of having a calf, which I don't see any, any huge uh, indications of anything having being in labor right now. Um, so we will go through now and as we drive through we're basically we're looking for calves we're looking for anything that's out of the ordinary at this point hi eyebrow cow oh run away run away um, we haven't been out to feed the cows yet or else they would be a little bit more gathered up but that's okay deal there's a cow all hunched over here and I always wonder oh calf no oh, peeing okay nothing like that first pee in the morning okay probably a little too much information but we get to know each other. We spend a lot of time uh, together in this gator through calving season. And that is going to continue as we have our 24-hour uh, calving live stream coming up on the way. And I'm trying to debate, I'm debating on how to do this. Time for breakfast. Yum, yum. Anyway, I'm uh, debating on how to do the 24-hour uh, calving live stream. I, my first thought was to incorporate it into the 30 in 30, but honestly, if we do that, you're going to lose um, two videos in the 30 and 30, right? So we're on number 27 now, so we could do 28 and then it would take, it would be 29 and 30 or however we wanted that to work. And you lose two, two videos basically because my thought was I would start it at 7 a.m. Let's take a look at these two cows and calves here. Some more calves looking good. Heads are held up high. They're paying attention to what they're doing, what we're doing. Number two, hey kiddo. So anyway, 
my thought with the uh, with the 24-hour calving live stream was that it would start at 7 a.m., which uh, uh, our time, which is when our when the videos are coming out anyway, and then it would roll all the way through until 7 a.m. Um, the next day. And obviously, I wouldn't want to make um, a video while we're doing that, <laughs> so uh, we would uh, basically skip a video. So. Um, or skip you know a whole vlog so anyway um, I don't want to do that I don't want to screw you guys out of two whole videos good morning good morning little one good morning number eight how are you you want to fight let's fight vroom, vroom, vroom. I can't wait until the calves get a little bit older um, because they do start to fight with the gator when we come out they'll actually uh, um, you know, face off with us, and then uh, we get to have a little, a little, uh, a little sparring action with some of the calves. That's always a lot of fun. Okay, more calves up and moving. I love this. Uh, as we more calves, we get up and going. Obviously, um, every time we come out, we see calves up and moving here in the morning. Here's another one over here. Uh, those moms that were hanging out back there in the windbreak are obviously starting to bring their calves up. Hey, kiddo. Good morning. Hey, number twelve. You're number 12, you're pretty new. Hi, buddy. Hi. Hi there. Number 12 was uh, born yesterday as well. Uh, the other wonderful thing about vlogging is uh, that uh, <laughs> you don't get a show, you know, there's no second takes, right? So um, when that one was born, I think it's a little boy, when it was born, uh, I filmed it, I was right there, and then I went back home to download the footage and it was all corrupt, so that was a big fat no-go. But So there's no proof of his birth other than him actually being here on this earth. Okay, more calves. Here we go. This would be Faith over here with Mom. Look at that. Good morning, Faith. Calf number one and mom. If you don't follow us on Instagram or Facebook, um, I'm gonna ask you to go and do that. Last night I uh, got a really cool picture of Faith while I was out doing night checks, and uh, I, uh, Aaron and I posted that on Facebook and Instagram. You can, you can check that out. Um, I, I, I thought it was a cool picture anyway, and, and it's, it's kind of a, a neat place for us to uh, be able to stay uh, you know, to post that, that instant stuff. Even though the, the vlog is very, uh, almost instantaneous, right? Like, we see comments, uh, I can answer those in the very next day's vlog, which I'm, I'm going to do today as we, uh, when we finish up with, uh, with checking calves, I'm gonna, uh, take a look at some of the comments from the last few videos and try to answer some of those today, as I really haven't had a whole lot of time to sit down and answer comments um, at the old keyboard. This is number 13, born last night. Hey, bud. Another little boy. I'm gonna have to take a look at the uh, at the uh, computer and see where we're sitting at um, boys to girls ratio. But this is uh, one of this is Lincoln's first calf of the season. A little red one. Uh, so the kids each have their own small herd. Uh, over the last, uh, well, over their first five years of their life, the kids' lives, um, we gave them a, a heifer every year. So the so they basically have a herd of five, and that, those five cows obviously have calves every year, and those calves then when we sell them or whatever we do with them. Um, that becomes uh, a portion of, or you know, kids' income. We put that actually directly into a fund for the kids for college or trade school or or whatever it is that they may end up doing in their lives. But um, I think uh, that's a really cool thing to do, and, and it's uh, basically an instant savings account for the kids, and uh, we can um, you know give them a, a good start in life. So. That's something I, I don't know who came, I think Gilbert actually came up with that idea because when Mackenzie was born, Gilbert was still alive, and I think he gave her um, a heifer that year. Um, um, 
just to just to start her own her own little herd. So I think that was actually Gilbert's idea, and something that we carried on from from him. Here's a brand new baby out here. This will be number 14. Come up and take a look. Now this cow I did see wandering out here last night. 121 is her number. And this would be her little baby. Hey kiddo, how are you? Did you make a baby? Did you make a baby for us? Did you make a baby for us, huh? Do you want a congratulatory piece of cake? You can take it. You can have it. It's yours. Oh, you don't want it? Are you stuck up? Are you too cool now? And it's another little boy. Cool. And we might as well take a look at our active calves. And we will see that we have uh, 13 active calves. 10.5% uh, of the herd has calved at this point. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bulls, and one, two, three, four, five heifers. Um, there was a question that I saw in the comments that asked if it was better to have uh, bulls or heifers, and uh, we prefer to be have. Sorry, I just spit everywhere. That was nice. Uh, we prefer to have. To, to be a little bit heavier on the on the bulls just because they are going to be a little bit heavier uh, once we castrate at branding um, we are able to um, have a little bit heavier herd the more bulls that we have so a few calves here number 10 number 9 and number 11 9 10 11 it's like a little gang look at them go like I said, moms are in the process of bringing their calves uh, into the herd. Uh, they uh, they will tend to keep them separated for a couple days. Kind of a nice bonding experience, bonding time uh, for moms uh, with their calves. Even though throughout these last few storms that we've had, they've been uh, they've been hanging out with other cows and bonding with them. So looks like we have a little bit more activity down this way. I can see three cows that are off hanging off by themselves so we are going to get our tagging gun reloaded here and make sure that we're ready next uh next cow we roll up on may have a baby a new calf for us so Anyway, back to what I was talking to uh, way back there about uh, the 24-hour live stream. Sunday morning will technically be the last video of the 30 and 30, but I thought a really cool way to wrap it up maybe to um, then kick off the 24 hours of calving live stream on Monday morning and let that roll all the way through um, until Tuesday morning. Then I'd take a few days off maybe and uh, catch up on some sleep and then figure out, uh, you know, then come back with a new schedule and, and however we're gonna continue this whole thing. Here's a couple more calves for us to take a look at. Here we have number four. And number five, these, uh, these guys hung out back here in the metal windbreak uh, throughout the entire storm. So they are obviously friendly with each other, buddies even. I don't know why, but our cows always look at me like I owe them money. So anyway, let me know what you think of that idea. Um, you know, coming off the, uh, and starting the 24 hour live stream on, on Monday. Hey, where are you going, bud? You coming with me? No, oh, mom just said, get your butt back here. And don't go with him. He's a bad influence. I'm not really that bad of an influence. 20 years ago, I might have been a bad influence. Now, I just have to keep bad influences around me just to uh, remember what it's like to have fun. All right, we got one more cow out here. 
that is uh, hanging out and doing her thing. My guess would be that if she hasn't had a calf yet, she will have one uh, at some point today. We're going to go down and take a look at her and see who she is and, and what she's up to. So this is number 142. She has not had a calf yet. So I imagine she is uncomfortable and probably wanting a little bit of privacy would be my guess. So we're gonna leave her alone. Uh, we'll come back and check on her in a little bit. We'll head back down this way, back towards the ranch, uh, or back towards the shop and uh, drive by the ponds here, make sure that nobody's hiding down here, which is always a, a possibility, so. So one question that uh, came up quite a bit uh, in comments over the last couple days I've seen is people asking uh, why we calve uh, when we do, and that's kind of the, uh, uh, an interesting question to uh, to ask and to answer because it really depends on who you talk to uh, and and why they calve when they do and obviously anytime you calve uh, is going to be uh, difficult you can uh, you there's there's no perfect time to calve I've got a friend of mine up in Montana and they calve in February they start calving in February and I was like man why do you calve so early isn't it cold and nasty and you're always dealing with you know uh, cows frozen down and all this kind of stuff um, but the thing is that they farm as well they actually you know I put up put up uh, wheat and barley and uh, so they have to be done with calving in order to uh, you know be in the tractor and start seeding and all that kind of good stuff that they have to get done uh, in April so they have to be done so that's more of a, a timing uh, timing thing so also there is there is the argument that when you have calves in colder temperatures uh, there's less bacteria in the soil uh, there's less chances for infection uh, which is a very valid valid point so um, we'll see that a lot too so down here uh, in our neck of the woods uh, which is a, a, a term I rarely get to use because we don't have any woods. Um, we end up, we see a lot of people that start calving even in March here. And I'm not sure if it's for the same reason or not, but we do see them calving earlier. Um, it's a, uh, a tradition type, uh, part of it is tradition because here uh, we see a lot of people selling calves in October. Now that's the busiest time to sell calves uh, here in Northeast Wyoming, South Dakota, or at least uh, at the sales barns we've been to. And uh, we, in order to sell calves in October, you you want your calves to be a certain weight. Um, so if you're if you want your calves to be 500, let's say 600 pounds at sale, which is you know not 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 uh, unrealistic, you want to time out your calving so that your calves grow big enough by the time that you're ready to sell in October. Uh, the average calf will grow about two, I think they say 2.2, I don't know how they come up with that number, but I usually just kind of average it out at two pounds per day. So if you're looking at a calf that's gonna gain um, 60 pounds per, per month at two pounds per day, and you want a 600 pound calf, um, and calves are 75 pounds when they're born. I'm not, I'm not gonna do the math, but I'm roughly gonna say that you want to sell a calf when it's about seven months old. If you wanna sell them in October at seven months old, you're gonna start calving in March, right? Okay, so that makes sense. I kinda did a little math there, that was fun. Um, but uh, so that's, that's where that comes in, and that's the tradition that, uh, or the, 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 the modality that, that we came into uh, when we came to the ranch. Gilbert sold in October, we needed to start calving. Uh, we, ca we actually calve late for this area. We, uh, I, I, when we came, everybody always told me, oh, Gilbert calves late. Uh, so the other interesting thing is that we do have some farming stuff to do. We have to hay, so we wanna try to be done uh, with calving by the time we're haying uh, at the end of June. 
So there's there's part of there's part of our farming equation into the whole thing. Here's another calf over here um, that I missed when we came through earlier. So we're gonna kind of I think I did I think I missed it. Um, so we're gonna swing down this way and just take a look. It's already tagged, so I just want to look at him or her. Uh, see oh wait a minute no this is uh, the one we just tagged she just moved it down here uh, there's number 14 121 all right so uh, those are the main reasons that that we have when we do obviously um, but we, we are running into an interesting situation here uh, where last year we held we weaned our cows which not many people do around here uh, they'll 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 load they'll bring in their calves in October load them on the truck the very next day and off they go uh, last year we weaned our calves off we fed them up a little bit not a lot um, but basically we weaned them off so that we could hold on to them until the market uh, went back up and, and we could hopefully at least break even on our calves uh, so because we did that uh, we did not have any income for the ranch in 2019. There was no income at all because we we didn't sell calves. However, in 2020, we sold calves in January. And you can go back and watch that video. That was our very first video of this year. Um, so we've already had our paycheck for this year. We started the year with our paycheck, which was a little different, uh, you know, banking-wise and uh, budget-wise. But... Uh, so anyway, we've already been paid uh, for this year. So we technically, unless we want to take a big old hit from, from Uncle Sam, uh, we do not want to sell our calves this year in October. Even if the price is good, uh, we're going to end up paying more in taxes uh, if we sell twice in one year, if that makes sense. We'd basically be doubling the income of the ranch. So we're actually gonna end up probably weaning the calves again this year, which then does raise the question, uh, could we wait, put the bulls in the later this year, calve in starting in May, let's say next year. And that's very doable. It's it's very, it's a simple process. We just don't put the, put the you can always move calf, you, it's hard to move calving back, but you can always move it forward. Um, we do have, other issues we're going to run into in May. Uh, obviously, the ground is is thawed in May, so there's more bacteria uh, in the ground. We may have to change how we how we uh, treat newborn calves. Uh, we may have to um, uh, change our grazing patterns. I don't know. I mean, it'll be a it'll be a new thing. So that's something that Aaron and I and her mom are actually going to sit down and try to figure out uh, what we do for this year for breeding so it might uh, it might show uh, you know so have some new changes coming up um, here on the ranch so that's our rounds for this morning um, I'm going to run in the house and get a cup of coffee uh, come back out feed these guys get that done and then uh, we'll get started on our day I do have to uh, package more beef jerky and uh, get that uh, to the post office today uh, but other than that, uh, I think we're going to try to get a little bit of work done around here. And uh, I think also I'm going to get a chance to show you more of the AeroQuip equipment that came um, that you saw yesterday and kind of what our plan is there. I have a 3D drawing of what our new corral system is going to look like that I forgot to put in the video yesterday. Um, so we're going to take a look at that and uh, you know see what other kind of mischief we can get up to. So stick around. It's going to be a lot of fun as we continue the 30 and 30 right here on our Wyoming life. Alrighty, cows are fed. Uh, in fact, a lot of the moms are actually bringing their calves back in, which is very good. So we have lots of cows, lots of calves, all mixed up in one great big jumble and enjoying their food. The snow is starting to fall just a little bit today and we are upstairs in what is Actually, the live stream studio, this is where we do our live streams uh, every Sunday night on the Beyond the Ranch channel. Uh, 
Um, but during the week, this all gets crammed in together because this is also uh, where I do my editing. Aaron's office is up here. My office is, I guess you could call it an office, is up here. Uh, we do a lot of photography. There's a green screen wall in case we ever do green screen stuff. And it's also where we package our beef jerky. Our beef jerky is for sale on our website. Uh, it's all raised right here on the ranch, processed uh, over in Sturgis, South Dakota, um, where... Uh, we uh, where we have them make our jerky for us. So we get orders, they come in on this printer over here and we fill every single order here uh, at this table. <laughs> we do it all ourselves. We don't have a staff working for us and that's why we appreciate your patience when you do order uh, beef jerky. Sometimes it does take us a few days to get it out to you. So I'm going to start filling orders for beef jerky. Aaron and I are then going to run it to town. We're going to run a few more errands and uh, then we'll be back out to the ranch. So enjoy this uh, making jerky montage. Not making jerky, packing jerky montage. The chairs are on the table The floor has been swept It's closing time and I'm a little tired It's a long time since I've slept The things are moving forward to move on Heading for a brand new start At the break of dawn Here I come You better watch out You better beware The rumor is out Nothing can stop me I'm going for gold I'm out of the dark I'm out of the cold Here I come You better watch out You better beware The rumor is out Nothing can stop me I'm going for Yesterday is gone A destination nowhere I travel on my own Here I come You better watch out You better beware The rumor is out Nothing can stop me I'm going for gold I'm out of the dark I'm out of the cold Here I come You better watch out You better beware The rumor is out Nothing can stop me Jerky's packed, we're off to town. And that, my friend, is exactly what Aaron and I did. We took the, uh, the beef jerky to town, got it to the post office and delivered and turned around and pretty much just got right back to the ranch. Aaron wanted to be back in time to open the farm store. When I went back out to check cows, uh, that's when I found something that I did not like at all. I found a cow who was actually in the pond. Um, she was right on the edge of the pond. It looked like she had slipped and fallen in the mud. And what had happened was when she had fallen, her back legs kicked out uh, behind her. And that's never good uh, when a cow falls like that, especially when they're really pregnant, because um, there are blood vessels, there are um, arteries within the uterus that are that are prone to rupture when a cow falls like that and that was my big fear was that um, something like that had happened i did not have a camera with me however and uh, i would just really we i had to get something done so what i did was i went and got the uh, the tractor with the forks on it and got her moved out of the pond and up onto dry land where i could hopefully see if she would be able to get up she couldn't um, get up and 
that was pretty much it. I had to make a decision uh, on what to do. By that time, I did have a camera back out with me. Our neighbor, Gary, uh, happened to be right there and, and, and saw what was going on, so he came over to give me a hand, and we performed uh, basically an emergency C-section in the field in order to get that calf out. Uh, what you'll see now is actually what happened during um, those few hours in, uh, in trying to keep, uh, trying to uh, save a calf on the ranch. All right, let me show you what we're dealing with here. A lot of times when these cows slip, fall on the ice or anything like that, their back legs are gonna kick out. That, back, that can actually cause a rupture uh, in their insides now. She is probably filling up with blood. And we can take a look at her gums and see how white her gums are, which means that she's probably bleeding to death, more than likely. <sighs> Oh yeah, we got her. She's good. Holy oh, Calf is out. Uh, Gary and I are on our way up to the shop here. And what we're going to do is get this calf put in the warmer, start drying it off. Huh? For now.
there's a, a saying that goes, uh, and I, I'm not even really sure how it goes. Uh, I've heard it said different ways, but that sometimes you eat the bear, sometimes the bear eats you. Um, you probably heard different variations of the same thing, but I gotta tell you, um, just having days go sideways could really kick your ass, you know what? It's, and all it takes is just one, one moment. And yeah, it's all backwards and sideways. And, and, and something that's totally out of your control too, really. I mean, the vet, when I called, even said the chance of that calf living is very slim. And uh, it's, you know, he was right. So we try, that's all we can really do. But now we're out here checking cows again. The whole thing starts all over. And uh, we come out and we look at all these little calves that are sprinkling the entire ranch. There's one right there, number seven. And we start looking for, for new moms. And we scour every square inch. I, uh, you've probably heard this saying before, uh, or, or you've heard it said before, when uh, ranchers and farmers always say, you know, Next year's my year, that's the year. And, and uh, I've heard it hundreds of times from hundreds of different farmers and ranchers that, I, I, and I think that's what farmers and ranchers live for. I think that's pretty much what everybody lives for. It's just that farmers and ranchers can, can literally put a pen to paper and say, next year it'll be better. We. Uh, we forever optimists and I've never met a farmer or a rancher that was a complete pessimist that was successful or that made it work or that lived their entire life doing what they love because you can love doing something and be a complete pessimist about it I've, I've met many uh, especially through my, tra my, my travels here on YouTube and emails and comments and, and people that tell me they ranch but, or farm, but they, they're complete pessimists about it. That nothing can go right. Nothing ever is going to go my way. Um, I, I don't know. I feel like it's the, it's the optimists that, that will eventually succeed. Or at least if you don't succeed... You get that one win that makes all the difference. So it's uh, it's been a crazy day, and I, and I feel bad for for unloading on you. Uh, sometimes you know this daily vlog thing is good and it's bad at times too. Because you know honestly, if we were filming uh, regular episodes of maybe twice a week, you guys probably would have never ever known about what happened today. Um, or very few of you would anyway. Uh, I might have discussed it eventually in a live stream or something like that, but it's not something that I would have been proud to show the world. Because nobody wants to share a defeat. Nobody ever says, hey, I made it all the way to the Super Bowl and I lost. All right. Moving on, I've got a plan now for uh, for our 24-hour live stream, which is coming up. Uh, I, what my plan is is actually we're gonna because I want to make it as convenient as I can for people that want to hang out with me for those 24 hours. Uh, we are going to begin the 24-hour live stream at 7 a.m. on Friday Mountain Time. So that's when it'll start. So we have a video coming out today. Uh, we have a video tomorrow, and then Friday we'll start the live stream. That live stream will run all the way until 7 a.m. On Saturday, 
at which time a new video will launch on our channel. Crazy, right? Because uh, part of hanging out with me for that live stream is we are going to go, we're going to make a video. We have to make a video for Saturday. We have to make number 29. We just have to do it, right? So we're going to we're going to settle in. We're going to do that. Uh, so you'll get a chance to hang out with me not only uh, throughout calving, but throughout uh, editing uh, and the whole process of my day as we vlog uh, is going to be shared with you. So I really do hope that even and it, really you don't have to hang out for the whole thing. Trust me, uh, uh, I'm, I'm anticipating people coming and going and going and coming and, and that's totally fine too. I'm down with that. That's that's great. We can do that. And I hope that you do get a chance to pop in eventually. Say hi. Uh, I will be streaming from my phone, so I'll be able to see comments when they pop up. Erin will probably be watching uh, from from time to time, so she'll be able to answer comments. We're also going to have friends of the channel like Matt and Dave and Nurse Tammy uh, right there along with us from time to time to hopefully be able to answer any questions that I can't get to or at least uh, uh, maybe somehow get my attention. I guess you can, they can call Aaron and be like, hey, have Mike answer this question. Uh, but uh, yeah, so that's, that's our plan for now. Uh, I'm sorry I didn't get a chance to get to the AeroQuip stuff that I was planning on doing. I was hoping to take you guys uh, through the corral system and kind of show you uh, what the plans were with the AeroQuip system. I didn't get a chance to do that, but uh, you know, things came up. We had to, we had to deal with it, and uh, I do appreciate you guys being there uh, with me for that. And it's something that's always, while I'm vlogging, it's always in the back of my mind. I'm like, you know, people are going to see what I did, and then they're going to say, well, you should have done this, and you should have done that, and you you screwed this up, or whatever. And then you then you you know, so there. Sometimes not showing things is actually a, a way of, of uh, preserving my own sanity. Whereas uh, with the blog, there's not much choice, right? If I if I didn't uh, if I didn't show you what happened this afternoon, then uh, I wouldn't have had much to blog. I could have came out, BS my way through this ending, and, and pretended nothing happened, and, and uh, I could have done that, but. That's not fair to uh, to me or to you. So thank you very much for coming along. I know this one's probably gonna run long, but uh, thank you very much. Uh, be sure to subscribe. Thanks for joining us in our 30 and 30. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll hit it again tomorrow, and then we'll be right into our 24 hour live stream where on, if something happens, honestly, we cannot hide it. There's no way, right? So uh, whatever happens, happens during that 24 hours. So. We will. Uh, we look forward to doing that, hanging out with you throughout that uh, as we wind down on the uh, in the 30 and 30, and also uh, our live stream on Sunday night. We have uh, some great people that we work with who are uh, gracious enough to donate um, some prizes and stuff for our wrap party. So to celebrate the end of our our 30 days, uh, we have uh, some some prizes to give away from Ariat from. Uh, Arrow Quip from BCS.